WSRadio.com. Welcome to Track Talk, your connection coast to coast and beyond in all the latest news, development, stake race analysis, and interviews inside the world of thoroughbred horse racing. From California to New York, Florida, and Kentucky, we have you covered. It's post time, live from San Diego, it's Track Talk. And we welcome you from San Diego, a little overcast, uh, June gloom here in America's finest city. So uh, will we see the sun? I would think we will before we get off the air. And we welcome you on a Sunday morning live across the country, worldwide, WSRadio.com. We are so pleased to have you join us. If you're a first-time listener, welcome aboard. Uh, We've been on uh, this trail a long, long time and uh, the end of the road comes today, the closing of Santa Anita, and then uh, we'll get geared up for a couple weeks of racing at Los Al here in Southern California, Orange County to be exact, and then we'll set our sights on Del Mar opening day, Wednesday, July 17th, and uh, it can't come quick enough. And If you are listening from afar, you know that uh, California has had its troubles uh, since the opening of Santa Anita. Uh, We can go a lot of different ways with it, and uh, we're going to be discussing that here on this edition of Track Talk. So let's get started by going inside the studio with my main man, Tommy D. He's fighting off a little June cold, a little headache, maybe case of the flu. But you're a, you're a true warrior, Tommy D. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good, good morning, everybody. Good to be here. Thanks for listening this Sunday. Yeah, talking horses, uh, horse racing, the sport that we love, Felix. So a uh, great day yesterday, uh, racing across the country. Uh, you know, we had some uh, some news, but we'll be talking about that moving forward. And a great day overall, I think. Did you get a chance to watch the Ohio Derby by any chance? I did, actually. I did get to see it. Owendale, much the best uh, in the race. But, you know, that math wizard, you know, put on a little bit of a fight. Long range toddy too far back. But overall, Owendale, much the best uh, in the race, I believe. Had racing at New York, down in Florida, Kentucky, California. The racing at Santa Anita as uh, we wind up here today. A mandatory payout, about sixty-eight thousand in that Rainbow Pick Six. You know, it was a mandatory uh, payout uh, last Sunday, and I think it returned nineteen thousand. You know, I, I I can't think anymore because we got a listener that's been battling us. You know, and every every word that we say, he's been countering his opinion, and he says you got to be prepared. Okay. So so I'm going to go on, go on a limb right here, and I'm going to say that that pick six paid 19 grand last Sunday, 68,000. There was about five million in that pool uh, last Sunday. I don't know if it'll get up to that today, but it'll be up to two, three hundred thousand, I would assume. And uh, 20 cent bet, you gotta, you gotta play it. Yeah, I mean it's uh, an option to try to get some money back here uh, before the meet closes, uh, Santa Anita. So. You know, it's been a tough one there, but, you know, we're all looking forward to the su- summer Del Mar, uh, Saratoga, right around the corner, my favorite time of the year. Yeah, you know, uh, they had that uh, permanently disabled jockey fund or uh, gathering yesterday at Santa Anita, and a lot, I mean, I thought it was well done. Santa Anita did a great job, uh, without any doubt. Uh, they had Pat Day, and one of my favorites of all time, always good seeing him and talking with him. I got a chance to talk with him uh, during the uh, Breeders' Cup here at Del Mar, and that was Sandy Hawley. And so when you say there's always a chance, you know, he was the Sandman. He was the get-out guy. The last race, you always bet Sandy Hawley if he had a mount because he would get you out. There's still a get-out time today at Santa Anita, the final 10 races. All right. So as uh, we proceed on this Sunday morning, it has been without any doubt, one of the ugliest, dreadful Santa Anita meetings we've ever had. And it's been painful. It's been painful to you, Tommy D. It's been painful for me. And I'm sure thousands and thousands of others who, you know, make Santa Anita and horse racing their livelihood extremely painful. And uh, there was a piece on CNN, a lot of media attention over the last three, four, five, six months, whatever the case might be, ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, you go anywhere, it's been out there. Uh, A very hitting piece on Friday night uh, by CNN, and uh, it 
showcased the ugly run that Santa Anita is having. And there was a lot of garbage that was thrown out there. And, you know, everybody is taking a stand from the Senator Dianne Feinstein, Feinstein to, uh, to the governor, uh, to the district attorney, uh, to PETA, uh, to all the media outlets. And it has been extremely unfortunate because, as I've always said, and I believe this in my heart, we need Santa Anita more than ever. With the closing of Hollywood Park, it has thrown California racing into a, a real s tough situation, without any doubt about that, not only for the racing but for the boarding and what have you. But yesterday morning, a horse from Jerry Hollendorfer's barn worked, and on the training track, uh, he had to be euthanized. And we are being joined right now with trainer Jerry Hollendorfer. Jerry, at top of the morning, thanks for joining us. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> J Jerry, I know it's been a trying 48 hours for you. Um, you were told that you had to vacate your stalls, not only at Santa Anita, but um, at Golden Gate. Uh, within 72 hours, can you comment on how you're feeling about all that has transpired? Well, I mean, uh, just what you said is the, uh, the facts of, of uh, things. You know, we've had, uh, we haven't had good luck here at, uh, at Santa Anita and uh, some bad luck at uh, Golden Gate, too. Uh, you know, we haven't changed uh, any of our uh, policies about uh, what we do with our horses every day and, and we look at them as, uh, as closely as uh, anybody in the entire industry. So I stand behind that and the, and the people that are helping me uh, look at these horses. So uh, the facts are, uh, you know, we had uh, four horses injured here at, uh, or uh, euthanized here at, uh, at uh, Santa Anita. And then uh, uh, Mr. Rip oh, uh, told me yesterday that, uh, uh, that uh, Belinda Stronach uh, did not want me uh, on the grounds anymore, either at uh, Golden Gate or uh, Santa Anita. So we're making arrangements to uh, uh, ship the horses to other locations. How were you told, Jerry? Were you told by a statement, or did Tim Ripo come and visit you personally? No, uh, Tim uh, asked me to uh, come to his office, which I did uh, underneath the grandstand there, and uh, he told me there. Jerry, is there anything in retrospect that you would do different? I mean, it, like you said, you know, I think everybody associated with the game and knows anything about Jerry Hollendorfer. You're a Hall of Fame trainer. You work very hard, very diligently. Three o'clock in the morning, your team is ready. It's all about racing, racing, and racing. But in retrospect, would there have been any changes that you would have in training the equines that had to be euthanized? Well, you know, I, I would have to say no because, uh, you, you know, it, in, in all uh, you're talking about due diligence, you know, we did that every day with these horses. And we certainly uh, would, wouldn't take a horse out and race uh, the horse and uh, our work working, you know, and, and, unless uh, we were sure that the horse is going to be okay. So, I mean, and those horse, uh, the two horses in, in the races, uh, they broke down. You know, they were looked at by a lot of different people, a lot of different vets. And these vets here uh, in California, you know, they're very strict about things and go over everything uh, uh, really, uh, uh, really more than any other place that. that Jerry Hollander for joining us live from Santa Anita. Jerry, uh, losing one horse is is painful, but. How are you dealing with the pain? This has to be extremely painful for you to not being able to stable at Golden Gate as well as Santa Anita. Uh, how are you feeling about the pain? And uh, you, I'm sure that you woke up this morning and you had a flurry of thoughts that run through your mind. Um, how painful is it for you? Well, I don't know. You know, I'm worried mostly about uh, the folks that, that are uh, work, working here and have to go. Uh, to another uh, location. I, fortunately, 
uh, our folks are going to uh, uh, want to go with us. But, you know, these people depend on me uh, for their livelihoods. And, and so, uh, you know, that's the hardest uh, the hardest part of it, you know. And, uh, you know, the facts are the facts. You know, they don't want me here, so I have to go uh, somewhere else. And, uh, you know, I can tell you it wasn't for lack of effort uh, that, you know, the problems that we had, it wasn't for uh, laziness or lack of effort. We, we've we been on the ball uh, every day and all the folks that work, work for me, too. So, you know, we've started on, you know, I've started a lot of horses in my career, 35, 33,500, and uh, we won uh, 7,600 uh, races. And, uh, you know, uh, we've been a, a viable uh, uh, entity in uh, California for a lot of years. Uh, you know, a lot of those years we made more than a 1,000 starts. So, you know, we've been uh, been uh, pretty busy. So in that, in that way, you know, it, it uh, hurts us, but uh, we're trying uh, to make the best of it. Jerry Hollander for joining us. Uh, Jerry, uh, Los Al has opened up. I know you have a string of horses that are stabled at Los Al in Orange County. Uh, Doc Allred has mentioned that uh, you are welcome to stable your horses there. Um, Del Mar has not released a statement as of yet. I think they will meet this week and decide on your fate. Have you uh, given any thought about will you go to Los Al and what about Delmar coming up here in July? Well, I don't know. You know, we're hoping to be able to run some horses at Delmar, you know, and if I have to uh, uh, step away for a while, uh, then I'm cer- certainly uh, w- willing to do that. Uh, but we'd like to be able to run our horses at Delmar. We surely, surely would. Jerry, the reform, you know, I, I have a little problem and, you know, I, I have not had not one happy day at Santa Anita over the last seven months. Uh, it, it, it just that when I walk into an OTB or be around uh, anybody that's associated with racing and watching racing, the number one most frequent in question to me is what's happening at Santa Anita. If I had a dollar for everyone who's asked me that, uh, then I could buy this radio station. But when we get back, you know, we look at, we, we look at, at Santa Anita and the reform, the, and I, I call it maybe a rush to judgment because I don't think any venue would have anticipated the hit that Santa Anita has taken uh, from opening day to the present. But are we consistent in the reform? Uh, A trainer that uh, has shipped a horse up to uh, Northern California with fractured sesamoids and uh, trying to trying to get him entered into into a race gets 30 days you who have had four horses that have been euthanized uh, get banned. And I don't know if it's a lifetime ban. Did they give you any indication on, you know, how long that uh, you'd be prevented from running there at Astronic Track? May it be Golden Gate, Santa Anita, Laurel, Gulfstream? Uh, have they given you any idea? And what about the reform? Do you think it's been fair? Well, I don't know. The only thing I can tell you is that um, of all the uh, trainers that I know that here, uh, whatever uh, reforms uh, were put out there, they were uh, followed closely. And, uh, you know, in our farm, you know, I, uh, you know, I didn't break any rules or anything like that. So, I mean, I don't think, I don't know if that goes into the question or not, but we didn't uh, break any rules and we were totally... Uh, cooperative with the vets and and uh, the people coming around uh, to to look at the horses in every single situation. So that's all I can say. You know, on the track, uh, the track sets their uh, protocol for how they want to handle things, and so then uh, you know that everybody has to go along with the protocol. So you, I, you know uh, that one guy maybe uh, sent a horse. Uh, up the Golden Gate to try to run it, but I mean that's the only one I know of. So you have no legal recourse. Um, have you have you talked to any legal counsel? Uh, I mean, this is your livelihood. They're banning you from making a living. Is there any recourse on your part? Uh, you know, we're just uh, concentrating right now on uh, on uh, uh, getting our horses moved and try to get our uh, people settled and. Uh, 
and get them get them comfortable uh, in their workplace. Uh, we're working on that. We haven't thought about any stuff like that. How many horses do you have stabled at Santa Anita as well as Golden Gate, Jerry? Well, we have a bunch. Uh, you know, all together we have probably a, a hundred horses. Uh, so, uh, or a little, little, little over that. So, it's uh, the logistics of it are a little bit difficult, but we're working on, on it uh, as we speak. Do you need places to house and barn, stable these horses? I mean, what do you do with all these hundred horses if you have to move them within a seventy-two hour span? Well, I'll just be glad you don't have that problem, but we have the problem, and uh, uh, we've been uh, pretty good problem solvers over the years. And so uh, we'll work uh, positively and uh, be happy for the horses that we do have and uh, and uh, go from there and try to do the best we can. Have you reached out to any farm owners asking them for maybe, you know, uh, a hand where that you can keep your horses until you figure everything out? You know, we're like I said, we're working on things uh, right now, and we'll we'll come up with a solution. Now, you recently mentioned that uh, you would be sending a string of horses to New York. Um, will uh, that be amplified? Will there be more horses sent to New York now? Well, you know, that's a possibility. You know, I'm I'm uh, all for California racing. You know, and I think every uh, contribution to a race here. Uh, by a California trainer is is an important thing, you know, and you have to have a successful uh, Los Alamitos and Del Mar and Santa Anita for uh, everything to keep going. So, you know, every entry is is important, and uh, so that's the way uh, that's the way that we look at it. And you know, I'm not opposed to uh, running in New York. I have some clients that want to be there uh, this summer, and we're trying to take care of them. Uh, that way and, and uh, keep everybody uh, happy. But, you know, I just as soon uh, run my horses here in California. Well, you are one who kept racing alive in Northern California, and then you brought your string down here. You're a Hall of Fame trainer. You have trained uh, magnificently uh, throughout the years. I want to ask you as a friend, you and I have been friends for a long time. Every time we've called on you, uh, you have responded by granting us an interview. And my heart is very heavy. It's heavy for the whole whole California racing sector. Thursday was a press conference up there that was well attended by the backstretch workers of Santa Anita, which I thought was just marvelous. It was organized so beautifully, and it showed uh, unification, which we need. What has been the problem, Jerry? If you were talking with me just one-on-one, what has been the problem from the outset at Santa Anita? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, you know you're asking me to identify things that, that might not be readily uh, identifiable. You know, some people have, have ideas about uh, what happens and other people have uh, other ideas. You know, you see it on TV every night, the dichotomy. So, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know. I just uh, try to do the best that I can every day. And going back to what you said uh, before about the uh, the workers uh, showing that uh, that they wanted to keep uh, wor- working here in California and, uh, and uh, staying on the job here at uh, Santa Anita, it is uh, very important what goes on here. A lot of jobs and economy uh, comes out of a... Uh, uh, are re- relatively small, considering, uh, you know, Santa Anita. It's a small place, but a lot of economy comes out of here. And a lot of money as well. I mean, uh, let's face it, racing in, uh, in, in California uh, provides the state with, you know, a large sum of money on claims and what have you, taxes and, and a piece of the pie with a takeout and, you know, all that that goes into racing. Tommy D, I have never seen anything like it in, in my career of horse racing. I think I speak for a lot of folks that it's with heavy hearts that uh, we close today at Santa Anita. Maybe not with a heavy heart, maybe with an anticipation of 
letting Santanita get back to square one, get back to level footing. No, 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 no pun intended there because I have the utmost respect for the people at Santanita. Uh, Nate Newby uh, the, the, are the fellows who bring it. Uh, Peter, Tom Quigley, who does that Quigley's Corner handicapping and providing the fans with everything. Um, the trainers, the owners, the, the grooms, the, uh, the hot walkers. I have the utmost respect for them because I love this game of thoroughbred horse racing uh we have uh, seen highs and lows i can only say this tommy d uh, that you know we've had two triple crown winners in the last three or four years uh racing has gotten more publicity over the last seven or eight months than we have had in gaining two triple crown winners after 37 years of not having one and then having it repeat two years later tommy d for jerry hollendorfer yeah, Jerry, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you've been training since 1979 for all the listeners. 23 win percentage, 33,000 starts, uh, 54% in the money. So you've been doing things uh, right for a long time. Uh, you're catching a lot of slack here. What, what would you say to all those critics out there uh, right now uh, to you um, in your situation uh, moving forward? Only that, uh, you know, uh, uh, they should consider my overall record, you know. Uh, I think there are short-term things uh, that happen uh, to people, and I think it happens in a lot of uh, different sports where uh, things don't don't go right. So, I mean, there's been a lot of pressure uh, on uh, on racing gear at Santa Anita uh, during during this meet. So things are, I think, more uh, magnified. But I mean, everybody's uh, doing the best that they can uh, to keep their horses safe. Jerry Hollendorfer, um, I have a friend, Tommy D and I both have a friend named uh, Tom Mansour, blue chip thoroughbreds. He has a farm up there in Hemet, California. Uh, I reached out to him this morning and shared with him uh, the situations that are ongoing. Uh, I, I, I would like to be able to hook you and Tom up in case that you need to have on a part-time basis. Uh, you need to have some of your horses stabled in barn there to ease the pain. And I would ask folks in Southern California that might be listening to this, 100 horses uh, in 72 hours, that, that you know, that, that's quite a situation to be in. But if there's anybody that can do it, I know uh, Jerry Hollendorfer can. Uh, Jerry... Uh, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I, I would urge uh, Delmar uh, to look at your record and allow you to come to Delmar and train and run horses there. Uh, you know, since December, we've had a lot of horses that have exited out of Southern California and have gone to uh, uh, other venues like Churchill Downs or Gulfstream Park or wherever. And uh, this has been a, a problem in California for a long period of time. Not having your 100 horses here at, at Del Mar or how many that are stabled in Southern California are only going to add to the problem. And I would hope that, uh, and I, I'm sure they will, Tommy Robbins, David Jerkins, and Joe Harper and the whole gang over there at, at Del Mar, I know they're quite concerned. I think the whole industry in California is concerned. I think the spotlight has been on California. And uh, I think we've been uh, treated quite unfairly. I know it's a situation that nobody wants to talk about, but I want to share something with you uh, that I've researched, and I want to share with all our listening audiences that, you know, a lot of talk is about will the Breeders' Cup move the, uh, the Breeders' Cup from Santa Anita to Churchill Downs. But if you look at the breakdown ratio at Churchill Downs, Churchill Downs has one of the worst breakdown situations in the country. So if you're going to move it out of Southern California to Churchill Downs, well, you know, that uh, is not uh, anything, you know, to hang your hat on. I don't know what to say and how anybody could rebound from what Santa Anita has gone through. It has been the ugliest of times in my heart of doing this radio program for 25 years, been supporting racing, more so in California. And to see this happen, Tommy D, 
Uh, I can't believe it. Final word, Tommy D? Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask uh, Jerry real quick, uh, you know, before letting him go, any major changes that you think could help this game in, in Southern California moving forward in your eyes? Uh, we'll get up. The people can only do the best that they can do. So, I mean, you have uh, resources that you work with and uh, horses and the, uh, entering and all that. You can only do the best that you can. So, if it turns out that uh, everybody has horses to run, uh, then things will be good down at Del Mar. But, I mean, uh, you know, so goes uh, Los Alamitos and Del Mar. So goes uh, Santa Anita. So it's important that uh, uh, that everybody does well. Jerry, one final question. Uh, do you feel like you've been the fall guy as far as all this going down and that uh, you having four horses that have been euthanized uh uh, do you think they used you as an example of that we're not going to tolerate any of this garbage that's going on with, you know, with uh, trainers, you know, exercising, training horses that are injured and uh, making a statement? Uh, do you think you've been a fall guy for all this? Well, I don't know. You have to ask. Uh, you'd have to ask management that. I mean, I'm, you know, uh, uh, you always uh, feel bad when uh, – when you're the target and something goes wrong uh, in your barn. But here again, you know, we can only do the best that we can do, and that's what we're going to do. And uh, if we're good enough, it'll work out. Well, Jerry, we appreciate your time. You've always been a stand-up guy to our radio program and to me personally. I'm here to help you and uh, you can lean on me. I got an ear here. You can always chirp in my ear. I know you will rebound. It's unfortunate for everybody. I know hard decisions have to be made and situations that we have no control over uh, really have entered into the equation. But I want to thank you for giving up your time on this Sunday. All the best, and we'll check in with you down the road very soon. All right. Thanks a lot. You got it. My man, Jerry Hollendorfer, always been a straight-up guy. Tommy D, uh, I don't feel good about, uh, you know, the racing in California, and I, I don't think uh, a lot of people do either. I know uh, without mentioning any names, I've talked to some people that are mainstays in this industry, and they are concerned. I know that Del Mar is concerned. Uh, you know, we have no window of era or margin of era or any era. I mean, we have no flexibility here because everything will be under a microscope. I'm sure that when Del Mar approaches, it won't be about the hats. It won't be an opening day. It'll be about the breakdowns of what has happened at Santa Anita. And I don't know where you stand on any of this, but I think it is just one big ball of headaches and confusion uh, that have entered into it. Um, I don't know what I would do. Damage control, I think that you would have to hire somebody to damage control, damage control, and it would go down the line because... I don't think you could ever expect Santa Anita to be hit with this situation like it has. Now, there have been more breakdowns and euthanizations in recent years, and it never got any attention, or not like it has gone and grown on the national basis that it has. But what it did do was that the numbers, three in one day to the next they closed, they came back, there was injuries, there was situations that escalated, and uh, then they went six weeks. You know, nobody ever talked about the great run that Santa Anita, and I, and I applaud, you know, the, uh, the track man up there, uh, Tim Ritvo, and all the people that worked diligently to try to find a solution. I really did. And they went six weeks without a a any mishaps, any breakdowns, any injuries, and everything was going good. And then they had three uh, that occurred. And then here came PETA, Feinstein, the governor, the district attorney, and they all came piling on Santa Anita. And it just wasn't a healthy situation. And quite frankly... 
I got to be very honest. I don't know if anybody uh, could have fixed this situation or been able to see the problems that have existed from the attention that we got. And couple that with, is Santa Anita in it for the racing? Or are they in it to sell the track or what have you? The livelihoods of many are being affected. And the trainers who have left to go into other regions and venues to race, I have literally did some work since um, the start of all this. And I have got to a number of 240 horses that have left California to race in other, in other venues. Now, these are Southern California based trainers uh, that are, uh, are training in California uh, that have left the state and sent a string of their horses, 20, 25, 30, whatever the case might be. This does not really seem to be the right route to go when we have a horse shortage, Tommy D. And it's a problem uh, that we've experienced way before Santa Anita opened up because we've always had a horse problem. And I can remember talking with Toby Terrell just prior to Del Mar opening or for um, Santa Anita opening. And Toby said, you know, we're going to have a major problem. And I said, what's the problem? He said, there just aren't any horses. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, something we've been talking about being on an island out here in California. So, you know, with Jerry Horlendorfer, you know, this gives him the opportunity to move his horses to a spot where there's more places to run. You know, but Jerry Hollendorfer has been here in Southern California for a while. Uh, but, you know, it comes down to these, you know, the horse shortages. We need to find more horses. There needs to be more incentives for the owners uh, and, you know, trainers, whatnot, uh, to keep them here. You know, and sometimes I think really what these out-of-state, you know, places is are getting casino money, which is really helping with the racing and bringing people to the track. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I think that that's a, something that we're missing here in Southern California. Uh, but in other states, that helps out quite a bit with those purses, you know, Oakland Park, Parks, uh, some of these smaller tracks, you know, even in Maryland, some good racing there, some good purses. Uh, they're keeping these smaller trainers uh, in some of the, you know, mid-sized trainers, you know, winning and making some money along the way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a situation that... I, I think is plaguing thoroughbred horse racing. And, and all I know is that, and I say this from the deepest part of my heart, that there are trainers out there that take better care of their horses than they take care of themselves. And if you go back on the backstretch of Doug O'Neill or you go to a, a Craig Lewis or a John Sadler or to a John Sheriffs or to any one of those horsemen, which in horsewomen as well, I know Donna Keen and Dallas Keen, uh, you know, their horses are like family members to them. And I think that the love that we have uh, for the horses itself has uh, sort of been the undertide where that we, uh, everybody's talking about the euthanization. Let's talk about those folks who get up 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning every single day. There's no off day if you're taking care of horses. The horses have to eat. They have to be bathed. They have to be, you know, taken care of, groomed, whatever the case might be. And these people take good care of their, their horses. If you have an opinion in regard to the Jerry Hollendorfer interview or if you have an opinion, let me release a number uh, for you. It's uh, 866-977-2346. That's 866-977-2346.